So this last step is growing customers for the web mobile channels. Now if you remember we started here on the left, we did earned and paid media, we got customers, acquired them and activated them, we've kept them trying to keep churn to a minimum, and now we're going to grow customers with a series of activities just like in the physical channel. Can we upsell? Can we next sell? Can we cross sell? And we can get referrals that will get us a viral group. One of the most important metrics to think about now that we have an end-to-end -end funnel is something called lifetime value. And lifetime value, LTV, is not your lifetime, <laughs> but your customer's lifetime. How much will they spend with you and your company from the beginning to the very end? And this is kind of an interesting idea because most startups and most founders are focused on how do I get them to activate here? But for you to be a successful company and actually thinking about how much you could spend on them over here, you need to understand, can I get them to spend more and more over time and how to keep them longer and longer by reducing churn? So one of the interesting equations for every startup is that lifetime value needs to be greater than customer acquisition cost. Seems intuitively obvious, but what you want to make sure is the amount of money you're collecting over here is bigger than the customer acquisition cost. You remember the amount of money you were spending from here to here. That was the customer acquisition cost, CAC, here. So lifetime value needs to be greater than customer acquisition cost. And as you get more familiar with your company and start talking to investors, the real interesting thing is what is this ratio? For example, in SaaS software, uh, some investors think that number should be 3 to 1. In, in telecom, it might be something else. But the key idea is you are now not just focused on the initial purchase, but you're focused on the lifetime value. If you have the world's most perfect business model, investors would love to see this number much bigger than this number. And so what you want to look for is a well-balanced model that takes into account how much you need to acquire customers, but how much ultimately you will extract from them over the lifetime. What's the lifetime? Uh, that really is up to you and your investors and how many years you calculate lifetime value. Some use three years, some use five. That's a question that you and your investors will discuss. This acquisition cost versus lifetime value discussion really is a balancing act. So what are some of the balancing acts? Well, in the customer acquisition cost, if all of a sudden you could get a viral loop going, well, that decreases your cost of acquisition. If, in fact, your conversion rate between acquisition and activation could be increased, again, it decreases your customer acquisition cost. If you could do in physical channels telesales or inside sales versus having a direct sales force, again, your CAC declines. The idea is what can you do to make this very efficient and therefore also on lifetime value. How do you reduce churn and attrition in keeping customers? Do you have scalable pricing? Are you cross-selling and upselling a lot? Can you expand your product line? And again, are you getting a viral loop and referral loop from happy and satisfied customers telling others word of mouth? And so this is a balancing game and for first-time entrepreneurs who are focused here, it's really important to think about customer acquisition cost and lifetime value.